Okay, <coughs> hello everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm uh, Wen Peng In, coming from RMU Munich, Germany. Uh, the talk I'm giving today is a uh, neural question answering over launch graphs. Uh, first, I introduced my research background in PhD. Uh, in the beginning, I did some embedded learning for words, phrases, and uh, sentences. Then I focused on the text matching, like uh, paraphrase identification, texture entertainment, and uh, answer selection, like for much choice questions. And uh, recently, I'm mainly interested, interested in the neural question answering over large graphs. And uh, that's also the topic today. Of course, if you have any questions for any of the part, feel free, free, free to ask me or we can discuss offline. So this is a whole picture of my talk today. Uh, given the launch graph, I first introduced a past query answering. So we assume we have some entities and relations uh, to retrieve the, uh, the answer for the past query. Then we extend it to some factoid question answering over launch graph. Uh, the question can have single relation or multiple relations. I'll first give some examples where time born. So in Google, we hope that Google can return the answer, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we have to uh, check the web page one by one. For example, the third one, Trump was born in Pakistan. Uh, I'm not sure it's true or false. The, the first one, it shows Trump born in New York City. So personally, I don't know which one is uh, correct or false. This is another example. Uh, which university is in the same city with AI2? Uh, unfortunately, the Google seems doesn't work well for this, for this question. Yeah. Okay, so in this kind of applications, we need a, a structured resource that uh, we uh, store all world knowledge. Uh, Launch graphs like Freebase, Yago, Leo is exactly what we want. This are, is a slip for the launch graph. For example, here you can find the entity Justin Bieber is uh, is a person and it's male, and it has some like a sibling relationship with Justin Bieber. Uh, it's also a, a person and a male. So in this uh, resource, if you give a query on it, it can return the gen uh, gender of Justin Bieber directly and very exactly. So that's why we want to do the question answering over launch graph. <coughs> okay. Uh, the answer for launch graph for a question like uh, what university in the same city with AI2 it requires uh, first is topic entity regulation like AI2 to Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence. The second one is uh, the relation identification. So in this example, it should be uh, located in and uh, inverse located in. So here, star means the inverse relationship. The third one, of course, is some reasoning algorithms. Uh, Let's uh, focus on the first part, past query answering. Uh, let's first start by a formal introduction of launch graph. A launch graph, it consists of a collection of facts, like uh, entity one, relation entity two. A path in the launch graph can be denoted like this. So it, uh, the E, H, E, T are the head entity and the tail entity. They are connected by a launch graph path. Then the launch graph, the uh, representation learning, it includes the launch graph elements, entities, and our relations, enabling the generalization to new facts. <coughs> so the task of past query answering can be defined like this, given a head entity and a summary relation passes, uh, predict the tail entity, ET, here. It's important for answer question like uh, who lives in the same city with Brandon's mother. So in this example, the Brandon is a topic entity, mother living and the inverse living are the relations. So the task is to predict which entity should appear in the question mark. Okay, some of the later work. The first one is the one hop modeling, giving the head entity and the relation predict the tail entity. Uh, turn C, HOLE, H-O-L-E, model this task by a score function over the uh, launch graph fact. Of course, there are some other very good work on it. And encoding the relation sequence, like given uh, R1 to RT. Some related work model the relation sequence, either by other embedding of the relations or 
either multiply the resolution billions or use recurrent neural network to encode the resolution sequence. Then compose the head entity EH with the path subtension PT to predict the entity, uh, the tail entity ET here. The composition function here is uh, flexible. It can be add uh, or the current neural network. In our work, we will compare them. Okay. Uh, our observations over the pair work is pair work, uh, for example, the Matterhop model approach like add cannot model the sequence order and the context dependency effectively. And the pair work rarely distinguishes passes which differ in the intermediate loads, like a recurrent neural network. Um, problems for, for them, the first one is if you shuffle the, relation, uh, the relations, some of the little work will generate the same relation sequence, uh, relation tensions for them. So that sounds problematic. The second one is model passes is increasingly hard if the paths are get longer and longer. The third one, entities and the relations are not equally well tuned, so it cannot give you a good uh, or high quality vector space for the knowledge graph elements. Oh yeah, um, because some some work uh, basically didn't include the entities in the past. Maybe they only consider the head entity and the tail entity and only the relations in the past. So no intermediate loads. That means uh, yeah, it cannot change the in entity invariance well, right? Because they are rarely considered. Mm, for example, uh, for this, it only encodes the relation sequence low entities inside. So in this architecture, basically it cannot change the entity embedding. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, our inspiration, uh, entities and uh, relations appear alternatively in the large graph passes. And the modeling passes of arbitrary lens, so we hope to tune both entity and the relation embedding to give a high quality vector space. And uh, a launch uh, graph element should cast different influence to the prediction process, given the different context in the past. Potential solution, so we choose to use the gated recurrent neural network like GRU or ARIST model to do the composition and the prediction for the, over the fact sequence. <coughs> this is our first sequence to sequence model. Um, it is split a path into a relation sequence and a entity sequence. We initialize the GRU hidden state with the head entity, with head entity, and then run the GRU on the relation sequence and predict each entity at each step. And uh, the red node, the red node means the er error between the predicted one and the ground truth. So the red one is the error. <coughs> uh, it has a benefit that it encodes the entity sequence and the relation sequence in a sing single prediction chain, so it's very simple. Uh, but the issue is the head entity cannot give effective guidance uh, when the path is too long. That's why we <coughs> uh, change the model slightly to zero initialize the GRU hidden state, but then run it on the relation sequence but we compose the head entity EH with the current head and state HI to predict the entity EI. The benefit is here, the head entity can participate in the prediction more effectively and directly than in the first architecture. But another problem is uh, because the current neural network, like JR, you usually remember the latest input um, better than the old input. So maybe the head entity here, uh, there is a mismatch between the head entity, like EH and uh, HT, because uh, to an extreme case, the HT maybe only encode the RT. It can, maybe cannot remember the history very well. So maybe there is a mismatch between the uh, head entity and the HT. <coughs> So our, our plan is uh, we want to use the latest predicted entity EI minus one to make up the mismatch between the head entity and the um, hidden state. So, oh sorry. Is there any description about what the hidden state is representing? 
the intuition is uh, if the path is very long or get longer longer, uh, the hidden state here um, cannot remember, for example, here very well. So it always encodes this much more than the history. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we com uh, combine the first architecture and the second architecture of this one. So we compose the head entity and the preceding pred uh, prediction E uh, I minus one and the current hidden state to predict the entity now. So it combines the first and the second architectures. Now we compare the three architectures. The difference, uh, only one composition process in say, uh, architecture one, but two uh, composition process in the architecture two and architecture three. I list the formula here. Uh, you can find that in the first architecture, it composes the um, preceding prediction with the, with the current uh, solution to, pre to predict. The second one, it encodes the head entity and the hidden state to predict the third one. It composes the head entity and the preceding prediction with the current hidden state to predict. That's the difference. Of course, they share some similarities. Uh, the first one is entities and uh, relations are in different spaces. The second one, the gating mechanism in a recurrent neural network enable flexible composition between entity and the relation based on the context. The third one is we find an entity and the relation embedding in each step of the passes. Okay, we show some experiments for this task. Uh, first, I'll show you the past example. Uh, here, the blue ones are entities. The black ones are relations. The last the red one is the tail entity or target entity. This table shows the statistic for the, for the data set. So in the beginning, you can find that the, nation, the nationality of cathode glass is the United States. So it's a single factor in the neural graph. Uh, in testing, we only predict the tail entity and the neglecting the intermediate entity in testing. This is the result for the uh, past query answering ta uh, task. We compare our three sequence to sequence architecture for um, based on some uh, state of art based on here. The composition trans E is a state of art for this task. We find that our three architectures are better than the state of art and the architecture three is the best. Uh, recall that we uh, in the second and the third architectures, we compose a head entity and the uh, hidden state to predict the composition function is add or jar u. So here we also compare them. Uh, so you said you have 26 relations. Oh. So yeah, so yeah. How many of these relations get merged relation of the three? Uh, actually, yeah. In, like what is the splitting thing and what is the... In this data set, actually, all the, I checked this data set, almost all the, all the relations have the inverse solutions, almost all of them, yeah. What data set is this? This is, uh, uh, it's, like, did you create your own or did no, you use it? Oh, it's released by Stanford, personally, Liam group. Uh, uh, Gu, Kevin Gu, Kelvin oh yeah. Yeah, especially in the first factor, yes, yeah. Oh, no, I mean, in, even in terms of prediction. Oh. Uh, <coughs> What's the... In prediction, in prediction, for example, here we encode the head entity with the last hidden state, so it can influence it uh, not that far away, right? We, we compose this one and this one directly. means to observe some direct influence between head entity and the tail entity. 
Yeah, like there's a in long case there's a heredity. Do you even want that uh, uh, strong interest that you get by connecting DHA to the gene? Um, how to say that? I'm not sure I get to your point. That's that's the motivation to change the actator one to actor actor three uh, two actually. So I guess the question is what hmm. is the motivation for that motivation? Are there So hmm. to rephrase this, if I'm trying to predict the thing at the end, so hmm. can you show the chain? Oh, the example uh, you mean? Yeah, yeah. right there. Hmm. So Zachary Taylor Wood. Yeah. After you go through this whole chain, it's pretty far removed from Carter Glass. Yeah, because in the data set, in te test data set, we shouldn't assume the existence of intermediate loads. So they don't exist, actually. So we have to predict from the head entity to the tail entity yeah. in testing, test data. True, and that's Oh, uh, that's only exists in training data, actually. Training data. Okay, we get that. Yeah. So, back up one slide. Then this EI, those are observed at training time, uh -huh. and you just use a latent state. So is there you predictive use the predicted labels from the test set, whatever you predict as UC minus one. Yeah. You predict UC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is a better thing to do than just one for each test. Well, you just get both from the network over the time. Uh, so the original data sets, they only provide the head entity and the relation sequence. We uh, enhance the data set by adding the intermediate uh, loads in the training set, but not in the test set. So in test set, we can only use the head entity and the relations, not the intermediate loads. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, recall that we designed this architecture, uh, hope to model the long passes more effectively and encode the order in the passes and a better generalization to, uh, for by tuning the relation and the entities. So we want to figure out if our sequence to sequence model is really more effective than the business in especially in longer passes. Uh, we saw the performance curve for the different pass lengths we found that in most cases, our <coughs> curves are better than the state of art C. But a surprising phenomenon here is that we expect the curve should uh, decrease slightly, right? But uh, now you observe it's very unstable. So, how we, so w when you compare against TransE, is this, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how you. Mm. Here is the hit. Uh, oh. Mm. Uh, oh, this is a composition. Com composed yeah, com composed sensing. Sorry. Yeah, composed sensing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> we found that even lens passes are harder than old lenses uh, in this data set. We did some. Uh, sorry. What's the like sample size for each of those? The mark, oh, example says this is a, oh. Like how many lengths four pass and lengths three pass? Actually, the maximum is five. The maximum is five. Uh, I'm wondering uh, if mm. this is noise or oh. if, if you have you means how, data points to. You mean how many example for five, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, actually I checked, I cannot give you the exam, exact number, but I checked the data set basically they are balanced uh, distributed. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, okay, so we did uh, some uh, error analysis. We found that it's mainly due to the existence of a large number of inverse solutions, and uh, most of them are one to n solutions. Uh, we computed the <coughs> spearman correlation between the inverse solution percentage and uh, the system performance. They are always above 0.9. So that's, uh, this hints that more inverse solution, more worse performance. Unfortunately, there is no good way <coughs> to model the inverse relations up to now. Okay, query plus answering assumes the existence of, oh, sorry. sorry. I have a question. That doesn't explain why it goes up, right? It just explains it should go down less. Oh, go down because. Uh, 
It means why? Like this one. Yeah, because we found in the oh, in the evidences two and four, there are there um, the proportion of inverse relation are higher than one, uh, three, five. Uh, actually, our number shows are about a half, fifty percent relations are inverse relation in lens two and lens four. Oh, why is the performance? Uh, why is the performance? So, yeah, I'm just going to say average over all the. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah. Oh. You mentioned that you had to extend the annotated data set with NTDs because they mm. have relations. Mm. Um, if you have a lot of many to one relations, how does that aggregate the. Many to one, oh, right? One to, I think you have one to n relations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, no, the, the inverse relations exist in the data set originally. We didn't change the relation. We only add the entities. So, yeah. Um, does that answer your question? Or? Did you model the entities or did you add the entities? Oh, um, yeah, some background for the data set. Um, <coughs> this data set uh, was created by by a list of one hop facts. So it's uh, created by traverse the one hop space. And I also traverse the uh, one hop space again. So keep the original path, but whenever I meet multiple uh, entities in one step, I just choose one randomly yeah. until I reach the tail entity. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's the Pass query answering, so it assumes the existence of precise entities and relations. But in zero world applications, we really need to pass the factoid questions into pass queries. So the factoid question answering over knowledge graph can be defined like this, given a raw question text, and then you project it into the pass query. For example, where time born, the, you can project the Donald Trump and the born in. Uh, who lives in the same city with Brandon's mother? Brandon e, mother living and uh, inverse living. So the task is predict which entity appear in the question mark. You find that the first example is the one single relation uh, example. The second one is a multiple relation question. question. So how about um, if only one relations? Because most of the world questions are single relation questions. How to make improvement to handle multi-relation questions? Okay, we have finished the past query answering. Now we go to the factoid question answering over launch graph. Uh, first, look at the single relation task. Uh, each question in this task requires the answer from a single fact from launch graph. And uh, even though it seems less challenging than the multi-relation question answering, but it's still far from solved. The first data set is Paranext, but it's very small. Then Facebook released a large scale single relation data set, simple question. And the latest is data about our deep neural network. We also work on this single relation data set. All the later work is a recurrent neural network, resulting very complicated model. Uh, these are two examples in the data set. The first one is uh, what American country is the creator of leaping cod? Uh, you can find the leap code is, should be the top entity, and the create, creator is kind of relation. Uh, if you check the free base fact, uh, the data set provided. So uh, the Andy Ning, uh, Nimping code is the uh, head entity, so you can find the Andy this word is missing uh, is a question. And the character created by is kind of uh, the um, paraphrase, <coughs> paraphrase of the creator. This example, uh, what's the active ingredient in beef 0.05 solution? Uh, in the launch graph, beef 0.05 injectable solution is the head entity, and the injectable is missing, and um, active ingredient uh, mortis is uh, kind of the keywords of the question. So our observation is that the surface for matching between the knowledge base entity and the entity dimension in the question provide very straightforward clue 
for the merchant. Uh, for example, the beef O.5 injectable solution in launch graph match with the beef O.05 solution in the question. Uh, this surface uh, for merchant provide very strong indicator, even though we don't know the semantic of them. Um, relation is usually the paraphrase or keyword for the question pattern. Question pattern here, uh, I mean the, we neglect the entity and only consider the remaining words, so we call it question pattern. Successful application of convolution neural network answer selection and the question generation tasks shows the CN is good at modern text matching. So this work will use convolution neural network to solve the single relation question answering. Mm. Um, the task you're looking at here have to translate the English question into triple? Uh, you mean this or this? Well, the first one. This one, you mean? Are you trying to, oh. what is the task here? Do you input the question and the oh. output is the query? Or? The task is uh, given the question right. and uh, the launch graph provides this. Uh, you need to first uh, find a fact from launch graph, it matches the question best. Okay. Then use the, uh, this should be tail entity. The tail entity is the answer by default. Okay. This is a ground, ground truth fact, but you need to uh, find it. And so you're aligning these entities with, with the yeah. question yeah. using some sort of heuristic uh, paraphrasing? Uh, yeah, that's what our model does actually. Yeah, how, to, how to match the head entity with the top entity, how to match the relation with our Question pattern. That's what our model do. Yeah. So on your next slide, you have English. Mm. So when you say, when mm. you say the entity Yeah. Uh, is, is your model a, is this a, a, a neural net model or is it uh, or is it? Actually, for for this part, uh, looking for the the entity candidates, it's not neural network. But matching them, like a compute to the matching score is a neural network. The okay. entity linker is uh, not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Mm. So give a free base fact, subject, relation, object, a question, mention, pattern. So we split the question into mention and pattern. Uh, two components in our convolution neural network. The first one is the correct level um, convolution neural network. It matches the subject in the a free base fact and the mention in the question on surface form. The second is a word never convolution neural network. It matches the resolution in fact and the pattern in the question. Object in the fact is the answer by default here. Okay, uh, we have two steps to, to solve this task. First is the entity linking. The second is fact selection. Entity linking, we Usually we have two steps to do entity linking. First is identify the uh, candidate entities from the free base. Then use the entities to identify a part of the question. It's kind of mentioned. Uh, we can do the two steps in different order. Uh, and it gives us different entity linkers. The first one is a passive entity linker. It means we first identify entity candidates from free base. Then use it to identify the uh, entity mention in the question. The second one, active entity linker, it means we first identify the uh, entity mention in the question, then use the span to identify the candidate entities from the free base, so different order. I first show the passive entity linker. Uh, we use each word of the question to retrieve the entity candidates. Let's say we get our entity set, and then we rank the entities in the set by, in our work we only consider three factors. We first compute the overlap between the question and the entity, then divided by the question length and the entity length. So that means we prefer the candidates which ha has higher overlap between the question. The third one is the position feature of entity in the question because we observed that most topic entity appear uh, close to the end of the question. So we, this is a position feature. Top unranked entities are kept for each question here. This approach produces more than one mention and a pattern for each question, more than one mention pattern pair. 
Now active interlinker, we detect the interdimension in the question uh, independent, uh, independent of the free base. So it, it's achieved by, for example, by limited entity regulation, give you uh, where trump one, so you need to detect trump is entity. So we uh, basically don't consider the free base now. We trained our bias model, CRF, to, to this task. For example, who lives in the same city with Brandon Lee's mother? The R model will detect that Brandon Lee is the uh, topic entity. This approach produces only one mention pattern pair for the question, so it can get rid of lots of noise. Now it's a fact selection. Entity linker provides entity candidates, and the entity candidates provide the fact candidates. So our system is uh, try to find the best fact from the fact candidates to match the question best. This is our system. And the question is, what major cities does US Route 2 run through? The tube is US Route 2 major cities. The first column is the correct level uh, convolution neural network. It matches the uh, free base entity, okay, U dot S dot root 2 with the entity dimension. Uh, US root two, so you can find some characters are mismatched there. That's why we use the correct level convolution neural network. And the second uh, column is the world level convolution neural network to match the relation major cities with the um, question pattern. So you can find that the um, major cities is basically some keywords here. And the second column is the very traditional convolution neural network to learn any embedding for the input. The, uh, the main contribution here is that, uh, as I mentioned before, the relation is uh, mostly the, some keywords or paraphrases of a part of the question. So we put some attention here to make sure that the keywords will contribute more to the question repetition. So we hope this embedding will mainly encode this part. So we, we call it alternative max volume. Alternative max, okay. Never mind. I think uh, you're, oh, you're mm. going to answer the question, I think, so I'll wait. Uh, I was going to ask a question, but the next uh, slide, I think, is going to answer it, so I'll wait. Uh, okay. Uh, alternative max volume in world uh, CNN, uh, the motivation is relation is perfect of question pattern. And traditional max volume treat all engrams in the uh, question equally. So we hope our alternative max volume can make the engrams which match the relation better contribute more to the question retention. Uh, any question? Uh, I'm just wondering exactly how the attention works. Okay, next. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, we, we compare the traditional max plane and the attentive max plane. On the top is the relation embedding, and this uh, matrix is the engram embedding, so each column is the engram embedding. Traditional max volume just extracts the maximum value from each row, right? So here is 0.75, 0.34. Um, yeah, it gets this vector. That's the traditional max volume. But we found that, uh, for example, here, the first engram maybe match the relation higher than other engrams. For example, we can compute the cosine similarity. We find that here we call it retention values. We find that the first um, matching score is 0 0.97, so that seems maybe they are keywords matching. The third one is also very high, the second one is negative, that means maybe they are not matched. So we hope, uh, then we first normalize the cosine similarity score to make sure the maximum is the one, the negative is zero, the other, other score will be divided by the maximum value. So we use this normalized alternative score to Multiply, multiply this matrix to get this new matrix. To get this new matrix, then we do max pooling over this. Uh, we call it alternative max pooling. So you can find that now the features mainly come from the first engram and the third engram. Uh, is that clear here? Okay. Now we. I first show the result for the entity linking. We compared our passive and active entity linkers to the state of art baseline in this data set. Both our linkers are better. We also uh, report the contribution of each ranking factor in the entity linking. Recall that AB are the overlapping uh, features. 
we see is the position features. You can find that A, B contribute most, but C still contribute. Yeah. What's N? N? Is it, oh. it's N? N is the internet linker. It will return a top N for candidates, right? So, so yeah. what's the metric? Yeah. yeah. So of course, we hope the top one is mm, more what, important. Yeah. And yeah. what metric are you doing? Accuracy on the answers? Mm, for the for the linker or for the whole task? For, for the, all of the numbers in here. What's the metric? Oh, this this is uh, top one. Oh, if it exists, for example, if the ground truth exists in the uh, top 50, then it's uh, count one. Okay, yeah. so hit the next. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> we will release our entity linker and the result for flow, flowing work to fair comparison. Now I show the result for the whole single relation question answering. We compare our alternative max pooling convolutional neural network with the three baselines. The last CFO is the state of art for this system. The first block uh, shows the passive interlinker. The second block is the active interlinker. You can find uh, our CNN is always better than the uh, business. And uh, the alternative max polling, alternative max polling is better than the traditional max polling. Okay, <coughs> summary for this task. This is the first convolutional neural network for the single relation task. And the effective retention mechanism in Max Pooling, we released the interlinking result to the community. Now we try to find some improvement over the single relation question answering to do the multi relation question answering. Challenges are above the single relation question answering. A question can refer to multiple relations in sequence. For example, what's the occupation of Trump's daughter? The first relation should be daughter, the second one should be occupation. There are short relation detection because the relations in open domain questions may not be seen in the training set. The third one, the lay on the uh, linked entities to discover the relations caused too many noise. Okay, so we think about, apart from the emitting from the entities, could we detect the relation from the question directly, for example? What's the occupation of Trump's daughter? Maybe we don't need to do entity linking first. We can detect the relations from the question directly to generate the daughter and the occupation directly. So in this case, the entity candidates and the relation candidates can improve each other. Uh, there are various numbers of relations, so we want to generate them one, one by one. And the relation names are in the sequence to sequence space we uh, in, I introduced before, and the relation words are in the word to back space. So we want to combine the both to alleviate the zero short problem. We split the relation names into words and uh, use the word, uh, word to uh, sequence to sequence. Uh, space to initialize the relation names and use a word work in embedding to initialize the relation names. We try to handle this multi relation task by an uh, improved relation detection subsystem. This is a whole uh, picture for the multi relation question answering. In the beginning, we assume that we have an uh, entity linker, it can give us some raw entities. Then we do relation detec detection based on some connected relation, based on some connected relation to get a ranked entity solutions. So this step can get rid of some unrelated relations. Then we use these relations to re-rank the entities. So we hope the entities with more related relations will be ranked higher than other uh, entities. So that's a re-ranking. Then we do the relation detection again, but with a different form of question. In the beginning, it's the raw question text. Here, we use the entity, uh, or oh, we replace the entity in the question by some special token. So can, uh, remove the entity, only consider other words. Then do the relation detection. So we have a new ranked entity uh, relations. Finally, we combine the uh, ranked entities and the ranked relations to get the queries 
and I choose a top query to retrieve the launch phrase. What is the special token that you special token? Sure you to with special token oh, it's basically uh, actually in server any token should be okay. What, what's, the, what's the intuition there? Oh, mm, it will tell the system where the entity is. Where the entity is, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Mm. Because entity are basically variable lengths, right? Maybe multiple words. So we treat it as a single token and uh, basically only tell the, uh, the network its position, but don't tell it what it is. <coughs> okay, this is our uh, encode encoder decoder for the relation detection. Given the question, who lives in the same city with, uh, uh, here, here is the token, um, mother. We run the recurrent neural network from left to right and use a last hidden state to generate the relations. So mother live in and uh, this is the inverse living and meet the end uh, single then it will stop. In this example, you can find that mother is a single word, so we use a word to work to initialize. Uh, live in, it has two words inside, so we use a sequence to sequence model to initialize live in, but use a word to work to initialize the two single words. The same case for the inverse live in. The data set to train this encoder decoder is the simple relation provide code entity and the relation for each question and the web QSP also provides the code entity and the relation sequence for the question. We build this, uh, we build this detector on the training set. This detector will give a score for each question and the relation pair. Yeah, question? Yeah. So for that plus question, the semantic parsing labeled by is Oh, Microsoft, right? the score in, yeah. Um, what percentage of that is actually just the relation sequence? Uh, that's true. So that we were a, sh a shortcoming for this. Yeah, that's true. Not that many this examples. Yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, this is the same picture we just revisited. So in the beginning, it's uh, raw entities and uh, we rank the solutions. We rank the entities and uh, then use a different form of question to do the solution ranking and finally we come by the uh, entity ranking score and the resolution ranking score to get the query score, then pick the top one. Okay, <coughs> first we show the result for the resolution detection. We compare our system with two state of art baseline. The first is alternative max plane I just introduced in the second part. Yeah. Its input is the resolution words. The second one is by uh, convolution neural network. It used the uh, character three engram. Our model is the best <coughs> because we used uh, relation words and uh, relation names. We also consider to discard the uh, relation names or relation words. Both uh, we found both contribute and the relation words is more important. I guess it's uh, alleviate the zero short problem better. Okay, this is a multiple relation question. Um, we compared with the the first baseline is the STLG is not deep learning baseline, it's a um, semantic passing uh, system. So it's a state of art for the multi resolution question answering. The second one is still the max, um, attentive max polling. Um, our system is uh, uh, get a new state of art in single relation, but only comparable performance in the multi resolution. Yeah. Can you go back one slide? Mm. What's the difference between this accuracy and the Oh, this is relation detection. I see. Oh, okay. You see? I was just oh. confused on the difference of the metrics. So this is this oh. is can you get the relation sequence correct? Uh, and this is can you get the question correct? Is that right? This. Uh, is that oh, the relation detection. Oh, this is uh, basically accuracy. Accuracy. Uh, accuracy on what? Uh, on uh, if the ground truth uh, relation is top one than Lloyd's relations. Yeah. Okay. And this is, uh, uh, this is, uh, oh. Yeah, also our curious actually. 
Yeah, if the ground truth entity is the answer. <coughs> okay, now I have introduced all the three parts. Summary, we began with the past query answering over launch graph based on the launch graph and the representation learning by lower sequence to sequence models. We extended the PQA task to zero word question answering. First addressed the single relation question answering and then improved the system to handle the multiple relation question answering. Our work got listed about in the three tasks. Uh, we released some open source like uh, interlinker and the result. Challenges, the one-to-one -one inverse relation is still the very big problem in the first task. Um, World-based matching between the relation and the question is uh, less effective, especially in Lois text. And current data set, yeah, that's uh, it to answer your question. The current data set is not big enough to train a good encoder-decoder relation detection detector. And uh, <coughs> we found the limitations of launch graph and the question form. First is a launch graph, uh, like some common sense knowledge, so, uh, such as usually women uh, have long air them. And, and I know some AI tools research are working on probabilistic launch graphs. Maybe it's a good solution. Uh, second one is diverse form of questions like diagram digits and some other forms. Limitation of deep learning. The first is uh, usually to require large scale and data to train a good model. The second is uh, it cannot model the digits very well. For example, it doesn't know that 40 is uh, smaller than 50. That's, uh, yeah, very obvious. <laughs> okay, so my personal opinion is we should combine the deep learning with non-deep learning uh, on rich form of knowledge. Okay. okay, I want to thank to my co-authors. The first is my supervisor, Henry Schutz, and my colleague, Yadola, and the three IBM researchers, Mo, and Bin, and Bowen. And finally, thank you, all you guys. Thank <laughs> you.